Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about an anti-cavalry civilization that is super slept on in Age of Empires. In fact, this civilization is considered to be one of the weaker civilizations for 1v1 Arabia, but I consider it to be very strong with anti-meta gameplay, specifically anti-cavalry gameplay. And nobody really considers this when talking about countering civilizations that go for knights like Franks and whatnot. And the civilization is Hindustani with the camels. Nobody knows about it. Totally joking. That's the most obvious counter to calf play. But no, this civilization that is actually being slept on when it comes to countering calf is the Bohemians. But how funny would it be to make a video on Hindustani when pretty much everyone is using Hindustani to counter calf? Listen, camels and camel civs are great to counter cavalry civs. But this civilization, the Bohemians, are actually really good in their own rights, camels aside, countering cavalry and in this video i'm going to explain how and i'll also talk about how the civilization is really hard to play against and if your opponents are not well versed with bohemians they're not going to really know what to expect from you and also what your options are and how strong your options are this is one of the main advantages to playing anti-meta if you play franks versus mongols or you know these civilizations like franks versus hindustani that are more mainstream that people know what to expect they're going to kind of know what you're going to go for but if you play anti-meta civs your opponent will hardly know what your options are how strong they are, what you're going to go for, what you even want to play. It's a lot less obvious, which is a huge advantage when it comes to a strategy game. And honestly, the Bohemians have multiple answers to Cav that you probably didn't consider. Let's go ahead and go through those options, and I'll show you guys exactly how to dismantle cavalry civilizations using this very slept-on anti-Cav slip. Now, number one, and very obviously, you get stronger spears and halves. Now, the Bohemians have a nice bonus where their spearman line deals plus 25% bonus damage against all kinds of cavalry. This is very obvious, but this is also very good. It makes it so your spears and feudal age are really strong against scout rushes and it also makes it so your pike switch against knights and castle age is a lot stronger and your halves and late game absolutely decimates hussars paladin elephants you name it it's a really good unit to lean on and it's a very easy counter to mass knights but of course your opponent will expect you to go for halves and spears but what if i told you there's another option that is just as good and more well-rounded than the spearman line as it turns out hand cannoneer in castle age is absolutely broken giving an imperial age unit to a civilization in castle age is basically like giving a cheat unit to a civilization in Imperial Age. Okay, not quite the same thing, but you kind of get what I mean. Hand cannons feel like cheat units when compared to Castle Age units. Hand cannoneer will dominate knights very easily. In fact, you can start one-shotting knights with just like 8 to 12 hand cannoneer, even when you consider the upgrades of the knights and hand cannoneer missing a couple shots here and there. So you can easily get to a situation where you have a death ball of hand cannoneer where like 20, 25 of them are one-shotting multiple knights at the same time if you use your stop micro. And so you get into the situation where the knights have to like jump on you and close the gap and as they do you're just picking them off one by one and one shotting them very effectively this is way stronger than doing the same with crossbows because crossbows have way less damage output so you need way more crossbows to achieve the same result compared to the hand cannoneer and speaking of crossbows chemistry expos also kind of do the same thing because of their extra one damage they can one shot knights a lot earlier and so you need way less chemistry crossbows to one shot knights compared to generic botkin era crossbows of course the only downside is that you miss out on thumb ring, which is why I personally prefer the hand cannoneer as my anti cavalry unit. But on top of that, you don't just counter cavalry with the hand cannoneer, it's just a really good unit versus everything. You trade pretty well against crossbows if you micro well. You can do high damage against siege and skirmishers, so even those are kind of like soft counters to it, not necessarily the craziest counters in the game. And killing buildings and villagers and just using it as a generic offensive unit is perfectly fine. The hand cannoneer is one of the strongest offensive units, especially in a scenario where you're in castleage. Usually, skirmishers and arbalists will counter the hand cannoneer because you get bracer in imperial age and stronger stats so you can easily like pick apart the hand cannoneer from an extra range away but because it's seven range for skirmishers and archers or crossbows with botkin arrow hand cannoneer are at seven range themselves so they can easily put up a fight against their range unit counters because again it's in the castle age the only downside in my opinion for the hand cannoneer is the fact that you have to wait for chemistry and you have to pay for it which is a long and expensive process but hey you do get a cheaper university and you do get a really nice economy bonus for mining gold early on so if you go for an all-in where you go three ranges chemistry right away and you're mining extensive amounts of gold i think you can get the situation where you can all in hand cannoneer and destroy the opponent's knight gameplay and even in the worst case scenario where they're not on knights and they're playing other stuff as i mentioned hand cannons aren't really weak to other stuff either so you don't really have to worry about that as well on top of that if hand cannoneer and the stronger spearman line is not enough to counter the knights you also have easy access to monks again the gold bonus facilitates monk play and you're incentivized to make monks and 
to make a monastery because getting sanctity and getting fervor will not only affect your monks but they'll also affect your villagers giving you tankier villagers and more efficient villagers since they move faster getting that nice incentive can facilitate monk play and can make that an easy option as a supporting unit for your main army getting into situations where you have hand cannoneer and monk a double counter to cavalry is just such an insanely hard matchup or an insanely hard situation for cavalry civilizations to deal with and if you add to that the halberdier in late game any civilization going cavalry will get absolutely picked apart and absolutely shredded you force cavalry players and cavalry civs to go into their other options that are usually weaker and sometimes you'll find players that are just stubborn they stick with cavalry anyways and you can destroy them and this is what i love about anti-meta or off-meta civilizations since they don't know exactly what to expect or how strong what you're going to go for is you can catch them off guard more easily than if they know exactly what you're doing i'll also give you guys some very practical advice with bohemians and not just make this a completely theory-based video so a very practical strategy is just to open one range archers and just focus on walling up your base with your few archers you can send them out get fletching couple spears and generally speaking just put some annoying pressure on your opponents when he reacts and when he's busy reacting to it you can fully wall your base and just defend your walling villagers with a couple of spears to fend off any opponent scouts and you can fully wall your base before your opponent gets to skirmishers then you can use that fully walled situation to get the castle age go for your university and three range hand cannoneer and push back any pressure he might have had in feudal age if you need to buy yourself a bit more time you can't get to hand cannoneer you can't wait the minute 30 for a temp sheet to kick in you can easily mix in monks or siege workshop get out some units and keep yourself safe from any feudal age aggression from your opponent or any forward towers he might feel emboldened to go for once you get to castle age if you had to make defensive siege it's completely fine we'll turn that into offensive siege as soon as you get your hand cannoneer out and once you get your three range hand cannoneer production rolling you can easily combine that with monks to counter cavalry or if they're not on cavalry you can easily go for mangonels either forward or from your base and go mangonels and hand cannoneer and that will dominate players going for skirms or archers and so you have this situation where you're planning to play anti-cav but even if your opponent goes for something else you're not dead in the water you're not like just completely stuck you easily have a very winning composition that you can push with and what i also love about the behemoths is that it's an aggressive civilization but it kind of hides its aggression because you can't make hand cannoneer right away if as long as you keep your university and your ranges behind your walls they don't know that you're going to go for this rush you can easily be adding an economy you have a good late game so they think you might be playing towards that but instead you're playing towards an all-in and once it comes out it's really hard to stop i also like following up this aggression by sending a bunch of bills to stone and then going with forward castles to bring out his sight wagons which can further your push and in general mining stone with the civ is really easy because you get the free upgrades of stone mining uh, and stone shaft mining for free so mining gold and stone in heavy quantities is very easy and very justifiable with the civ the last thing i'll mention is that you also get a unique tech in castle age that makes your gunpowder units move faster so even in a late castle scenario you can get faster moving hand cannoneer which just makes micring against cavalry be it cav archers or knights a little bit easier and makes your unit it that much stronger. Getting chemistry in Castle Age also sets up a nice bomber cannon switch once Imperial Age kicks in. You don't have to wait for chemistry, you can just start making bomber cannons right away, giving you an easy way to end the game and an easy counter, or another easy counter, to any skirms that might be on the field. And the last thing that's worth mentioning is that you have food monks in the late game, which could be a nice way to trade well against any paladin play. But honestly, if you want my take, I don't think you need to even worry about food monks. I think halves are more than enough when combined with hand cannoneer monks and whatnot to trade against paladin. You know, you don't need to tech into mass monks or anything crazy like that. Just a few that you have, plus the halves are more than enough. Just make sure that in the late game, you get the 200 pop and you get all the techs in. Bohemian late game is one of the best in the game, and you have a really easy time pushing with a death ball of hoof needs, hand cannoneer, halves, and monks. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. I really like making this because I don't want the ladder to turn into just like one civilization, like Georgians, Mongols, Franks, the easy civilizations, the cap civilizations, just dominating everything. This is a strategy game, and I want you guys to be aware of all of these counter strategies strategies that are out there in front of our faces that are not as explored as some of the more popular or meta civilizations that end up just being easier to play especially for lower brackets guys this element of surprise plays a huge role commitment to your strategy plays a huge role and just going for something that's unorthodox can surprise and confuse your opponent which i think is a huge advantage and gives you the upper hand in most scenarios thanks for watching the video make sure to check me out on twitch for my live streams and on patreon for my exclusive guides and content as well as my build orders link to both of those in the description like the video comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.